Hello and welcome to the 2021 Battle of the Bands. If you're watching this at home, please like the video and subscribe to the Stamford College Music Channel. I'm going to introduce our three judges. And first off, we have Sam Luce. Matt Wheatley. Luck be a lady tonight. And Julian Elkington. We are four fifths of apple juice, and this is Gutter Girl. This next song is Where Is My Mind by the Pixies.
to me, Koi Koi, where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Oh. Way out in the water, see it swimming.
Okay, so I'm here. I'm now judging Peter and his band. I didn't catch the actual name of the band, uh, other than Peter, Peter and the band. What I liked about it straight away was a bit of introduction, a bit of confidence, a bit of swagger, a bit of attitude. I like that from the, from the, the lead there. He, you know, he obviously uh, mentioned the judges. But, you know, there's a bit of a sort of like, I don't know, <coughs> cross sort of like anything from Cocker to uh, Morrissey to that sort of like... A little, a little tiny bit of arrogance on stage, and I like that, um, but not too much. So um, you did well there. Um, I love the drumming, uh, so it's some great drumming there. I'm not a drummer, but I like the fact that you little things like you moved the sticks, you twiddled the sticks, you you know you did little things because it brings more into it. The thing about watching anything live is you, you, you're watching four or five people potentially, obviously if it's a band. And you want to see little bits going off here and little bits going off there. So I would always recommend to any band, be braver, be more confident. Um, you know, uh, do do a few things. Maybe try to come up with something, your, your own little move, your own little touch. Um, and that would be good. And little things like the drumming, uh, doing something different to the singer, to the bassist, to this, is, is, is great stuff. So, um, yeah, I thought that I liked... Um, I, I, the rhythm was in, in, in timing and I liked uh, that when you went off and just was a singer as well without the guitar. I was quite surprised you didn't do an Arctic Monkeys song. I thought that would have been quite up your street. But I love the fact that you finished off, uh, I believe, with Sweet, wasn't it? An old uh, 70s song. So you seem to, I don't know how long you've been a band, but you seem to have quite a bit of presence about you. You have a lot of confidence. So I would recommend just keep doing it and keep doing more performances, more performances. And then every week and every month or what, how every times you play live, you'll get to see those slight improvements along the way. The slight improvements with timing, slight improvements with rhythm, slight, slight improvements with confidence. And then maybe get the bass to have a little bit of a, a spot on one shot and the rhythm guitarist to have a little bit of a spot on another shot. You know, and just, and just mix it around a bit. And enjoy it you know we want to see you up there laughing and sort of smiling and enjoying it okay excellent well done good performance well done guys that was excellent um it was nice to see you all play as as a band um i've seen you kind of through the through the doors playing as a band before and little bits here and there so it was nice to see it all come together um ollie you're obviously a very competent drummer and that's extremely good the way that you played but not only the way that you played, you'll see on a lot of the close-ups when you when we can see just you and the camera's just looking at you, you're not looking down at the drums, you're looking at everyone else. And that is such a key thing for a drummer to be able to do. Although you can't see their hands moving, you can see everyone moving in time. And although you're the one keeping time as the drummer, you need to be sympathetic to what they're playing as well. So it's not a case of, I'm the drummer, I'm keeping time, you must all follow me. When you're watching them, you're playing sympathetically to them, and that is that's like level up drummer. You need to be able to do that, and you make the kit sound really nice as well. You, you can always tell the difference between a an accomplished drummer and a beginner drummer, and that's the way they make the kit sound, and you, you make it sound beautiful. So well done there, Peter. I thought your your voice sounded great. I thought it sounded really fantastic. Um, you've got this kind of stage presence that it would be great to nurture it. I think you you really do go the extra mile with that and you really do give it the big one when you're singing, um, regardless of whether you're playing the guitar at the same time or, or just singing. Um, and I think, as Julian said, you've got a little bit of that kind of, I don't want to use the word arrogance, but you've got that kind of persona of the lead singer, um, which is great and you need that. And you need that as the front man because you're the person who's got all the eyes on them and you need to have that. When you're um, playing guitar or when you're singing, you kind of have this this different persona where just as um, you are when you're singing, you have this real larger than life thing. But when you're playing guitar, it just comes in a little bit, but it just concentrates through the guitar and you still give it some movement. And that's fantastic. I think the cover at the end was brilliant. It was so nice to hear that. Um, Elliot, there was some nice solo work there, some nice lead work. And Saxon, great to see you in, in two bands in this competition. Um, and your bass playing is excellent, as is your guitar playing. So well done, guys. Excellent performance. Four-fifths of Apple Juice. What a great band name. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that performance, guys. Well done. First thing off the bat, thanks for the intro, saying my name more times than anybody else that's bonus points for you absolutely well done um but your energy performing and the kind of style with which you approach the performance was really good obviously it's a different environment you've got no live audience in there so you've got to bring the energy and do that yourself and you've done that really successfully gelled really well together um, as a kind of quartet and um front man 
you know, you're kind of bringing an awful lot of energy into the performance and, and, it's, and it's driving everything forward, which is really good. In the first song that you did, um, I enjoyed it. Some interesting kind of meter changes there, some time signatures. Going into the chorus section, there was a few set bits where I was wondering if the chords are a bit out of sync with each other. There's a bit of dissonance in there, so just really lock that in. Especially if you've got songs with difficult changes where you're, you know, jumping in and out of sections in different time signatures, you just need to make sure that's really locked in and you're confident with it. Um, drummer, really, really good job. Um, some nice stick tricks in there. Always be careful not to overuse um, your, your like extra repertoire, you know, what you've got, your kind of stick tricks and stuff, because sometimes they will catch you out, especially when you're in a high pressure situation, you're playing something that's tricky. Um, you know, you, you think oh, I'm used to doing this and then, and then that's an opportunity for you to go wrong, which you wouldn't necessarily need to. So, you know, I, I always tend to save things like that for towards the end of a set when you've got the adrenaline kind of really up and running and, you, and you're in a, a good, you know, kind of vibe. But, you know, well, well performed. I would say in the chorus, in the first song, you had this groove where you were doing kind of three crushes with the, uh, you know, the rhythm section. But because you used it every time, it started to become less effective and it started to just sound a bit repetitive. So maybe think about when you're structuring drum parts about accenting the end of sequences, the end of phrases, um, and using it maybe every second and fourth time or every fourth and eighth time, for example, so that it, it's something extra to the groove um, and then the, the ear is drawn to it and it sounds more excited and more interesting rather than doing it every single time and then people kind of switch off from it and it's not as effective. Um, the covers, really, really great energy, good job throughout. A few little tempo issues counting in and, and when we end songs as well, just need to make sure that you're really clear on how you're gonna end the song. Don't leave instruments ringing unless it's intentional. Um, all try and end at the same time. Um, is, is always a really key thing. Sometimes quite tricky, but it's just, you know, visual cues, look at each other, everyone turn into the drummer and, and the drummer will lead when you're gonna end, something like that would be really helpful. Last song that you did, Ballroom Blitz, great energy, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, just really well performed. So overall, great job, very impressed, enjoyed watching your performances and uh, well done for the rest of your course. I'm Amy and this is Megan and this is Heart of Glass by Blondie.
gas soon turned out to be a pain in the ass. Seemed like the real thing, only to find mutual mistrust, lost combine. Nice choice of song, um, nice and soulful, good emotions, um, good depth, good range of depth to the to the singing, and it was in key, and it was nice. Um, it would be nice to see, obviously this goes hand in hand with performances, but it would be nice to see some more confidence up there because you are up there on stage by yourself. So I know it's difficult, but um, don't be afraid sometimes to really belt those uh, tunes out and go with the confidence because your voice is lovely. You've got a great voice. So if you can match that with the confidence uh, in the future, I think um, I think you'll go a long way with that. So um, no problem with the piano playing. That was uh, it was good. Um, it was good timing and not, had a nice tune. Bearing in mind it is the college piano, I think you did very well. Um, so all in all, I thought that was a very nice start to the evening. Well done, thank you. Well done, girls. That's fantastic. I really enjoyed that, Amy. I think you've got a beautiful voice. I think you do really well there. Um, Megan, you played those the, that keyboard fantastically well. Um, you played quite um, conservatively towards each other. No, neither of you kind of went over the top of each other. You were. Um, quite dependent on each other and you, you played off each other quite well that was nice um, Amy it might be nice to hear some of your guitar in that as well if you could um, play some rhythm guitar or maybe even just, just picking I know that Megan's doing the main kind of block chords and the, the main chordal stuff there but even if you're just doing a bit of a line on the top even if you're just playing just one chord and then going into the next chord in the next bar that would have been nice um, I think your voice is sounding really good. It would be nice to see you doing a bit more stage presence wise. I know it's difficult when you haven't got an audience, but you can use that as like a live rehearsal. You know, you, you can plan some stuff out. You can you can try and be a bit more emotive with your movements. Um, it would be nice if, if, if that side of things matched the voice side of things, because your voice is fantastic. And I think those two things together would really be the whole package. It would be fantastic. Well done, girls. It was very nice. Amy and Megan, really good job. Really enjoyed watching that performance. Um... First thing I think I would want to say about it is I felt really confident as soon as you got through like the first few bars. Sometimes when you see people perform, and this can be any, any level of performer, it can be students or professionals, but you, you find some singers or some performers where you just feel a bit on edge that they're not going to hit the next note in tune or that you know the piano part might go wandering off and hit a wrong note. And I didn't feel that at all. I felt completely confident that you were, you know, in control of the performance and that you were singing confidently and that the piano part was, you know, I, when you stop listening to the piano part because you it's just supporting the, the vocalist, that's a really good sign of a, a confident, you know, performance because you just are secure in what you're doing. And that's that's what I got from it, which was really nice. What I would have loved to see and I know that this is probably a result of the performance environment because you're in an empty room, but a connection between the performers. So when you're uh, accompanying a vocalist, uh, Megan, it's sometimes a, a really good idea to kind of look up at the performer and have a little bit of flexibility in the tempo, in the, the phrasing, so that you let the vocalist direct and dictate the speed of the music and then you can adapt your dynamics based on what the singer's doing. So a little bit of connection between you. Obviously you're focused in on what you're playing and that means that you're playing it really, really well, but you wanna try and develop that where you can look up from the music or you can look up from the keys and you can just perform more confidently and engage with the, the wider room, especially when you have an audience back in, um, you know, kind of watching what you're doing. In terms of the song choice, really, really nice vocal tone, Amy, for, for the song. Always be careful of the line between putting your own approach to a song and then kind of emulating an, a different singer um, because it, it you did pick up a lot of the traits from the original and from uh, Debbie, Debbie Harry? 
Debbie Harry's um, approach, I think that's her name, but from Blondie. And I think in the key as well, when you got down into the lower register and you're hitting that low E in the, in the phrase, in the verse, it's sitting right at the bottom of your vocal register. So the volume's just dipping a little bit. So either work on that so you can project it a little bit more confidently, or maybe just shift the key up one step, uh, you know, from, you know, from C to D, for example, um, just so that you're a little bit more confident in that low range. But when you, when you get feedback that's on a kind of technical level of these are little tiny tweaks, you should be really you know confident that that's because you've done a great job and i'm nitpicking so really impressed great performance enjoyed it well done hi i'm grace hi i'm amber hi i'm sophie and this is rihanna the first song we're going to be performing is control to be performing is quite miss home Get it. 
dripping for his closing time. The one on her street with a blinking sign. All of his memories for poignant. I won't be there to see the snow melt away. Oh. Yeah, I've been gone on business. I gotta make some money. And I really feel the distance. And I couldn't miss home And I miss you telling me To leave my shoes at the door Cause you just swept the floor And the dirt drives you crazy Oh, I quite miss home Cause it feels like poetry When the rain pours down on the window While you're in my arms And we're watching the TV Oh, I quite miss home Now you're cooking from the living room And then I tell you that I love your food I know it doesn't come easy Could you know it reminds me where I'm from Oh, I'm in another city I got nobody with me And it just really hit me So, uh, what can I say? Yeah, there was some really strong parts of this. Um, at times, some of the harmonies were really nice and pleasant to listen to, with some very strong individual vocals. What I would um, advise and say to improve on, sometimes you need to ensure that you're in the same key when you're singing some of your harmonies. Sometimes one of you is singing slightly out of key to the other. But that again comes with practice and performance. And another thing that I would like to uh, see more of is a bit more confidence with the singing. There is three of you up there, um, and I know you've got the rhythm guitarist at the back, and the pianist um, at the side, but with three of you up there singing, um, you, you know, sing with more passion, more emotion, maybe a bit more confidence. Um, you know, maybe one of you might take a natural lead. You may even want to... Uh, I'm not saying you all wear the same sort of clothing or you all work out some sort of dance, but there might be some sort of movement, something that can make you just stand out because you've definitely got the voices and uh, the talent there. You've just got to use it and make sure you harmonise and you're all in the same key. And that just comes with practice. Uh, piano sounded great. I, I presume it was the same pianist um, uh, behind mm -hmm. us uh, as the other time. And... Rhythm and guitar just need to remain focused. There was some times when the timing was slightly out, but again, it was a nice part of the music. It was nice to hear that in there to go uh, and blend with the harmonies. Um, so yeah, I can say, I don't know how many times you performed. Uh, I've got no idea, but um, 
Again, practice makes perfect, and I thought you were very good, and there were some really good, strong elements, so well done. Excellent. Well done, girls. That was beautiful. Um, when we actually did it on the day, it was so nice to be there. It was just the four of you, and then I was there behind the desk. It, it really had a great atmosphere there. It was absolutely beautiful to hear. Um, the harmonies that you're working on, a lot of the time when you're actually all singing together, um, there's some harmony elements to it, but a lot of the time you're singing in unison. It'd be really nice if you could work on the interplay between the harmonies a bit more. Um, I'm sure we can look at that in, in some lessons in second year. Um, but it'll be nice to hear you kind of playing off each other a little bit. It's beautiful when you get your voices together because you've got three very distinct voices there. Um, but you can get each one so you can work at your at your speciality. So one of you can be singing low and the other one's singing high and you can really get them so that they're interweaving between each other. That's something we can look at. Um, Rihanna, I thought your guitar playing was good. I think it was potentially difficult to hear yourself on stage. It was difficult for, for the whole thing. Um, but I thought what you did um, was understated. It was nice. It didn't need to be the forefront of stuff. It was just keeping time and it was just adding that extra chord element to it um, with the backing track as well and, and it worked. So well done girls, that was really nice. Grace, Amber, Sophie and Rihanna just watched your performances, your two songs, really well done, good job. Um, confused the life out of me when the piano started and there was no piano on the stage. So uh, well done for using a track. Using a track and performing to a track, especially with live instruments as well, can be really tricky. And there was a few issues in terms of the timing and the layering between the track and what the guitar was doing. So Rihanna, you might want to think about listening to the track and finding the space within that and then thinking how can the guitar complement what the track is doing rather than just copying it. Because if you're trying to just do the same thing and you're just adding another layer on top, if a track speeds up or slows down within it, you know, within how it's kind of progressing, it makes it very difficult to stay in time and then what you end up with is this kind of muddy effect where they clash against each other and at times that was that was unfortunate because it was just um you know kind of distracting from the arrangement but um in terms of the vocals and how you kept in time for both songs and how you kept the kind of flow of the music really impressive harmony work was very very good and all three of you've got a really nice vocal tone um i would love to see a little bit more performance confidence from all four of you, actually. Um, I know it's difficult because you're performing in an empty room and everyone will have had the same situation, but things like eye contact, if you're performing to camera, know where the cameras are and sing to the camera because the audience is obviously going to be where the camera is and that's, who, that's who's gonna be watching it. Things like performing with your arms crossed um, or if you're not singing and you're waiting for your part, you want to always look engaged in the performance rather than I've finished and so I'm just gonna sort of wait and then you start singing so now you kind of are engaged in the performance. Always be part of the performance regardless of whether you're singing or whether you're waiting, whatever's going on. Um, just a, another little point as well with the guitar, sadly a, a, a slight negative as well, always check your tuning, really fine, especially if you're playing against a track you need to make sure that you're in tune to the track, right? Because not all tracks will necessarily be um, tuned to the same as digital tuners. So you do need to check that and do, um, you know, maybe have the track available off stage so that you can sample it um, before you perform is a, is a good tip. But overall, really good performance, nice song choices, nice arrangements. So well done. We are the last soiree and we're, we've got two songs which we're performing. The first one being Heather by Conan Gray. I 
It's just polyester You like her better I wish I were Heather Watch as she stands While she's holding your hand Put your arms round your shoulder Now I'm getting colder But how could I hate her? She's such an angel But then again Kinda wish she were dead As she walks by What a sight for sore eyes Brighter than the blue sky She's got you you ever kiss me? I'm not even half as pretty. You gave her your sweater. It's just polyester. Would you like her better? I wish I were Heather. Oh, okay. Okay. This is Another Love by Tom O'Dell. One, two, I wanna take you somewhere, so you know I care But it's so cold and I don't know where I bought you daffodils on a pretty string But they won't flower like they did last spring And I wanna kiss you, make you feel alright But I'm just so tired So first of all, well done. Uh, nice choices of songs, I thought. Um, again, I'd like to see a little bit more confidence, even with little things like the introduction. So be clear so we can hear you introducing and then what songs you're introducing, those sort of things. But again, that comes with um, practice and the amount of times you perform and everything else. But it's it's it will all come, but you just, you've just, just got to... Um, you know, believe, believe in yourself and, and bring that confidence with you. But particularly if you're going to be, anybody's up there and you're putting yourself out there, it's a hard thing to do. So well done for that anyway. It's good. Um, nice songs, good attempt. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more passion and energy, uh, a little bit more drama throughout, not just from obviously for the vocals, but the, the rhythm section or the drumming. I know they're nice, slow and... Um, soulful songs but it was still nice to see some uh, drive and energy um some harmonies will need working on there was a few times that we were slightly out of key with one another um but again that comes with practice so i think that was a really good attempt and i think if you carry on working i think uh, those harmonies and confidence and everything else will come and uh you know try to come up with something a little bit quirky for yourselves as well even if it's just a little bit of a movement with the guitar or a little bit of movement with the bass, but try to just do, do a few things 
um, where you're not all quite as um, static. But excellent. Well done. Thank you very much. Well done, girls. That was nice. Um, I remember when we were recording this, it sounded fantastic and it was, uh, it was a beautiful atmosphere in the room. What I'd like to see for the two guitarists, Beth and Amy, I'd like to see something a bit different for the two of you. So if one of you's playing the chords, I don't want to hear the other one playing the chords as well, playing the exact same thing. I want one of you to be playing the low down chords and another one of you to be playing maybe a different voicing of the chord a little bit higher up. If one of you is playing an E minor really far down, then the other one can do the E minor shape uh, up on the seventh fret. You can do it a bit higher and it would just get it so that it doesn't sound like one guitar playing together. Because the thing is, if you've got two guitars playing the exact same thing, then as soon as you play a microsecond out of time with each other, it's really obvious because you've got two notes that are bouncing off each other. But if you're playing different things in different octaves, if you're playing a different chord or a different chord voicing, it can really add to the overall texture of it. If you're both playing the same thing, it just kind of stays there, but if you're then playing something higher or you're playing two things that are contrasting, then it really just brings it up another level. Beth, I think your voice is really excellent. I don't think you give yourself enough credit for that. Um, I think it sounds really, really nice. Matt, your voice is fantastic as well. And the three of you all together, I think they contrast very nicely. It would have been nice to hear um, something a bit more. I think some of the harmonies that you did were nice. I think we can maybe work on them a little bit more and just get those vocals just interweaving a little bit more. Um, but overall, it was, it was a great uh, attempt to those songs. I thought they were really nice and you did extremely well. Well done. So feedback for May's band. Uh, which I believe you're called The Last Soiree. Just watched through your two performances, your two songs, and really, really good job, well done. The first thing I was really impressed with was the fact that it was quite an open arrangement. So you, it's quite a difficult thing to perform when you haven't got a lot of sound behind you in terms of the accompaniment. So the fact that you went for the softer arrangement with just the guitars was a really brave choice and it suited your vocal tones nicely um, all three of you have got a really nice um, tone to your voice i like the fact that throughout the two songs you kind of switch between who was leading um, and and then who was doing the harmonies and the supporting which was a nice um, a arrangement a nice approach to it i would suggest when you're doing harmonies in such a kind of open arrangement and you've not got that big wall of sound behind you you want to try and really make sure that those harmonies are, are tight and um, it was kind of a little bit in and out in places. So that would be a good, a good uh, place to focus your time on for future performances, really locking those harmonies in so you feel confident singing against each other. Where does your part sit? How does it sit in your voice? So that you can attack those notes with confidence. Some of the, you know, some of the harmonies would come in and it sounded as if you weren't entirely sure as the, of the note when you started and then you felt more confident so when you came around to it the second time it sounded a lot cleaner and we got a really nice rich harmony um, but overall really really good performance nice choice of songs uh, they suit like i say they suit your tone and your style just a confidence thing really i know it's a, a difficult performance situation performing to an empty room um, but really good job
Good morning. Hi, it's Julian again. Uh, I'm just uh, now reviewing or judging uh, Megan's piece on the piano. Um, so I, I thought it was very good. I thought timing and rhythm was was uh, lovely. You can tell that Megan um, is really starting to be a, a, a you know accomplished, confident player on the piano. She certainly knows more than one song because I heard her do uh, Breaking Glass earlier with. Uh, with Amy, and that was a nice piece on the piano as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think it was really emotional, r really good timing, um, clear throughout, and uh, beautiful playing. So I'm not a pianist, so I can't give you that. To, uh, Matt, Mr. Matt Whitty can give you some of those tips. But apart from that, Megan, carry on. It was really good stuff. Uh, I thought it was really emotional. Uh, parts beautiful, so well done. Excellent, keep up the good work. Megan, well done, that was beautiful. I think to come up and play that at, at very short notice, um, I certainly wasn't expecting you to do one on your own, um, but to be able to do that just completely off the cuff like that is really admirable. It was really, really nice to, to hear. Um, you have such concentration in your eyes when you're playing, it's difficult to to really get a feel for the performance when it's just you in the room where there's no audience there. Um, but it would be nice to have a little bit more expression in the playing and not have it um, quite as just, just the notes. There's far more to a performance than, than just the notes. And we can look at that moving forward. But I thought the way you played it was beautiful. You didn't, um, you didn't go too heavy handed, you weren't too light. It was just sympathetic to the piece and it was very nice. Well done, Megan. So I've just watched Megan's performance uh, playing the piano. First, Comment is that it's really, really good. Great job, uh, very confident uh, performance in terms of your playing style. Consistent tempo throughout. Um, some suggestions as to what you might develop with this. You could think about some dynamics as you're sort of moving through the song. Because you're playing a pop song and you're playing the melody line and the accompaniment line at the same time, it gives you some freedom to play around a little bit with the melody as you develop through the different verses and you get into the you know the, the later stage of the song. So you could think about maybe improvising a little bit outside the, the written melody um, is sometimes a nice thing to do. And also think about the texture of the piece. Because it's just a, a single melody line and the accompaniment, you can think about breaking it down so you're playing block chords and you hold that for longer, you give it more space. You did that sort of in the, the third section of the song um, and you went to playing single notes, but you could just think about how can you do that a little bit more so we get more of a journey as we go through it. Um, but overall, really, really good performance. Well done. Hello, we're Kenny's Cabin. This is Say It Ain't So.
So it's Julian again. Um, I'm here to talk about Battle of the Bands, and now we're talking. I haven't got the name of the band, but it comes up on the uh, the video, the virtual video as Patrick and the fellow musicians. So um, first of all, well done, um, because it's always uh, I don't know how many performances you've done, but it's always difficult to get those performances under your belt. Um, there were parts of the. Uh, in terms of maybe with with I presume Patrick's the front person with the with the guitar and singing, there were times where it wasn't quite synced correctly. But I liked the presence and I liked the guitar in. And I think once you work on getting those two, um, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, your voice is an instrument as well. Once you get those two working uh, correctly together, 
I think you've got something there, really, because I like I like the way you move and I like your presence, and and it's good. Um, the, the the rest of the band sounded uh, in rhythm and sounded tight. You could hear the instruments in the right place, and I think with anything, with a bit more confidence and a bit more practice, you will really start to sound like an accomplished uh, a, a band that can really knock out some good tunes because it, it's there. You've got. You've got what needs to be there. You've got the nice beginnings of something. So well done. Excellent performance. Thank you. Well done, guys. Really enjoyed that. Great Weezer cover. Say it ain't so. That's one of my favourites by that band. Um, Joe, I think you hit the drums like a drummer. You hit them really well and you get a really nice tone out of them. You can always tell the difference between um, a really good drummer and a mediocre drummer. And that's how they make the kit sound. You can make a bog standard kit sound really good if you're hitting them right. And you hit them really well. So uh, excellent well done for that um patrick your guitar playing your rhythm playing is fine i think your vocals on some of the high notes is just a little bit more practice needed just to get right up to them i know um when you're recording at the end of the day or whatever it is it's difficult to get all the way up there sometimes um but you can do it just practice those sections in in your rehearsals you don't always have to practice songs all the way through if you just want to go for a bridge and a chorus and then kind of evaluate and say right what was good about that what wasn't quite as good and then practice again it's always worthwhile just running the same 16 bars and then just practicing that you don't have to go all the way through the song just to get to the chorus i think you really benefit from doing that it'd be nice to see a bit more cohesion from the band i know with covid we can't exactly go and run right up to each other um but just facing up to each other giving it a little bit um between the two guitarists or the bassist or whatever it is um Saxon, you're obviously a um, purveyor of a fine guitar tone and um, your fuzz was sounding really good there. So, uh, yeah, well done, guys. Excellently played. Kenny's Cabin, or Cavern, one or the other. Um, really good job. Very impressed. Um, great energy throughout. Both songs had really steady tempo, very tight in terms of the structure and Everyone knew which part they needed to play when the song transitioned from one section to another. Dynamics, uh, Mr. Drummer, very impressive, solid technique. Dynamics were good, tempo was solid all the way through, some nice drum fills. Um, one suggestion would just be if you're gonna transition, for, if you're trying to up the dynamics and you're going up onto the crash cymbal, you can use the crash cymbal like a ride cymbal and really open up that, you know, that kind of extra level of energy. Um, you kind of started there in the first song and then you went over to the ride, but you can you can stay there and just really push that power through, but really good. Um, lead guitarist, obviously, sadly I don't know all your names, guys, um, but the lead guitarist, I would just suggest when you're not playing, try and stay engaged in the performance. There were a few times that I caught where you kind of, you, you didn't have a part, so you were just waiting with your kind of hands on, on top of the guitar, which is fine, but and in a live situation with an audience, I think the energy would kind of push you into doing something. But then other times you went off and you were kind of having an interaction almost with your amp and you were working on maybe some feedback or something. That, that worked really nicely, so just keep that energy up. Bass player, really solid throughout. Second song, so much more energy than the first, and that really added to the performance. It was great. Hitting those little punches and the rhythm, and kind of articulating those with some kicks and some movements. It just brought a lot of energy to the performance, which was great. Um, lead vocalist, really good job. You had kind of good energy throughout. In the first song, some of the melody lines in the verses kind of wandered off here and there. So just, just try and tie those down and be confident with, um, you know, what, what you're singing. So that it's, you always want the audience to be able to follow to a certain extent. So if I don't know if these are songs that you've written or if they're song covers, but either way, when you're trying to adopt something, you always want to make sure that the audience can engage with it. So if a melody is jumping up and down and here and there and everywhere, it sometimes is a bit sporadic. Um, the only critique that I think you guys need to work on is ending the songs. Start of the songs were really strong. You all came in on time. Energy was great from the start. But the end of the song was just kind of like a fizzle out. You know, it's like when shopping falls out of a bag or something and you just think, oh, okay, well, that's that. You, you've got such good energy through the songs and then you just don't quite know how to end. And it's, you've just got to be confident. You hit the last note and that's it. There's no extra little tweaks on the guitar. There's no extra hits on the cymbal. There's no nothing. It's just the song finishes. 
be confident in that. Obviously playing to a silent room is a little bit different, but just be confident in the song has ended and then we move into the next one. Overall though, really impressive, great job, well done. In third place, we have Kenny's Cabin. In second place, we have Amy and Megan. In first place, and the winner of this year's Battle of the Bands are Four Fifths of Apple Juice. We are